I know you're there. Will you leave me alone? Will you, you leave me alone? You listen to this. Dear Sir, there is money, a large sum, due to me from the sale of my pedigree cattle in the Argentine. And there is also money to come from the Standard Oil Company, who have chartered four of my tankers. In all, about 40,000 pounds. When this comes, naturally, I will have no more need of financial assistance and will return my order book, reference number 86-27946. I will also pay to the government £10,000, which should more than cover anything I have received. A balance to go to the Treasury to be used for any purpose the Prime Minister wishes. My solicitors, Messrs. Keane, Duncan and Mackenzie, will be dealing with these matters. Meanwhile, as you are aware, the powers that be have again increased the rates, and they are demanding from me immediate payment of ten shillings and sixpence. Also, sixpence more every week. I enclose their account for you to see. I can't pay it. Yours respectfully, Margaret Ross, Mrs. 47 Shaw Street, Countess of Aird, Dame of the Order of the Garter, Doctor of Law, Assistance Book Reference Number 8627946. P.S. I need a pair of shoes. The ones I have let in the rain. Good morning, Mrs. Ross. Well, what's the latest? Are they still at it? Yes. Good morning, Sergeant. Yes, they were listening this morning. Well, I've been thinking, you know. Why don't you get rid of that wireless set of yours? That's the answer. Yes. Yes, but what about the pipes? And all the other things? Mm, yes, of course, I'd forgotten about them. Well, it all takes time, you know. We have got a man on it full time. Is he out now? Oh, yes, he's always on the job, is May Gray. One of the best we've got. Yes, but there is something new. They've had a key cut. And they get in when I'm out visiting friends and go through my private papers. Is that so? Well, I must make note of that. You see, if it's definitely not the Dolans. The Dolans went some weeks ago. And Indians are now living in the house. One of them has a beard. And there's a white woman who may be held against her will. I don't know. Yes, well, we'll change our line of investigation, Mrs. Ross. I'll put the vice squad on to it. And thank you very much for letting us know. I'm very much obliged. Yes, and a happy new year. <laughs>
in his loving arms and cleanse you with his blessed spirit. God bless you, lads. That's right. Send out the message. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Sit down, you dozy old cow. <laughs> easy to eat in here today, unless this noise has stopped immediately. Now sit down, sit down all of you. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? Aren't you? Yes, sir. Now you will all sing a hymn, then you will get your suit. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mrs. Ross, over here, please. Uh, Mrs. Ross, I got your letter. You've got ten and six, I think it was, to pay at once. Is that right? Yes, and, and I, I want a pair of shoes. It's all right. Well, now, you get the ten and six now, and you must go down and pay the bill as soon as you can. Will you do that? Yes, I do it tomorrow morning, after I've done my charity work. Good. You do that. Well, now, about the shoes, I'll send someone to see you before the end of the week. Uh, try and stay at home in the mornings, will you? I sometimes have to go out quite early in connection with personal matters to see my lawyer and so on. Oh, I know, yes. But if you could just stay at home in the morning for the next few days, it'd be a great help to me, you see. Very well, Mr. Conrad. Whenever mine's obliging a real gentleman. My husband, although his qualities weren't apparent to everybody, had the makings of a gentleman. You see, I married beneath me. Did you ever hear from your son? He sent me a huge bunch of flowers yesterday. Roses. It was my birthday. Oh, well, that was nice of him. He never forgets.
But this is precisely what we, as a party, uh, shall be looking to in the future, and paying strict regard to, moreover. We are not a party that pays lip service to the old age pension at election time, and then conveniently forgets. The problem, the major problem of old age is undoubtedly loneliness. A great many old people live entirely alone, unvisited and unwanted, living day in and day out in small rooms uh, without company or friends. Poor old souls. We are going to be their friends. And I put it to you that at the next election, we should all go forward and cast our votes in the light of what I have said here today and in the light... Mum, Charlie. Who? Charlie. Charlie who? Charlie, Mum. Your Charlie, your son. But your father isn't at home. He hasn't been at home for 20 years, you stupid old mare. I didn't come to see Dad, Mum. I came to see you, darling. What for? I've got something for you. What? A peasant. Hello, Mum. Where is it? What, darling? Is that it? This? Oh, the present, you mean. No, no, this isn't it. Where is it, then? It's a surprise. Let me in and I'll give it to you. You can't stay the night. They haven't got the guest room made up. That's all right. I'm not on the scrounge. I just want to come in and see you for a minute or two. That's all. I pay a visit to my own mother, can't I? Yes. Well, there we are, then. Been to a wedding, have you? You've got confetti in your hair. Confetti? Yeah. Oh, uh, forget it. Well, we're not going to stand here all night, are we? Let's go into the ideal home exhibition. You can put your broom down. You don't need that. It's not full moon. What have you done in here, then? Done? Look, why don't you... I mean, can't you... Look, um, here's a couple of quid. Buy yourself, get yourself... Uh, look, when's your birthday? Uh, go and spend it on something, uh, soap or something. Thank you, Charlie. You always were a good boy. Yes, well, don't get hysterical. Look, um, I'm going to the room. Uh, I'm not leaving. Uh, I just want to get something. I'll be back in a minute to make us a cup of tea or something. Give it. There. Give 
Did you guess it? What? What you were looking for. No, it doesn't matter now. What was it? Uh, it doesn't matter. Well, I've got to go now. Oh, I've just poured you a cup of tea. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I just looked at the time and it's late. Uh, I'll see you then. I haven't seen your father for quite a time. Well, that's no great loss, is it? I'll be off then. All right. Charlie. What? Where's your parcel? What parcel? You had it under your arm. Oh, the parcel. I left it out here. I'll pick it up on the way out. Look after yourself then. Shall I see you? Yes, I'll be back again soon, about a week. Hot for a week. Can you deny that? Didn't he give me money? What? I didn't ask for it. He gave it. and stones, that's all it is. You want to mind your manners, you stupid bitch? Who needs it? Well, get lost. And you! Oh, I'll take your pardon. Oh, excuse me, miss, miss, miss. Uh, Mrs. Ross, who? does she live here? Mrs. Ross. Some old bird who lives down there. Why don't you knock and find out? Oh, right, thanks. Could have thought of that myself. He's uh, busy, you see, so I do his outside calls. Um, you, you've got another room apart from this, have you? Yes. Ah, uh, may I see it? Uh, just, just routine. While I'm here, you know, but it doesn't matter. There's nothing in the room. No. Oh, oh. Well, that's 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 fine. Just a quick look while I'm here, eh? Uh, this way, is it? Read a lot, don't you, Mrs. Ross? Oh, yes. I've always been a great reader. We always had a library at the old house. Fond of a good read myself, books and that. Uh, of course, you uh, uh, ever ever thought of getting rid of those old newspapers? They clutter up the place a bit, don't they? I like to keep them for reference. Yes, yes. Of course, they're a bit dangerous, you know, if there's a fire or anything. I'm very careful. Well, dirty, too. They collect the dust. Well, I keep them. I might want to look at something. Yes. Right. Right. Now, about those shoes, won't uh, that the only pair you have? Just these. I... I caught it on something. Yes, yes, well, fine. Yes, we can manage to do something about those. Oh, yes. Uh, we'll see you within a day or two about these. I like a nice style, though. Nothing racy.
Yes, what? Why don't you escape? Do what? Escape. Take a chance. Run away now. What are you talking about? Run away? Who from? From that vile man who's holding you against your will. Against my what? I know. I know how he treats you. You go to the police and you'll get protection. What have I got to be protected from? From him. From that Indian. Now listen. Listen, you mind your own sodding business. Nobody asks your advice, so don't give it. Oh, yes, and another thing. The other night you was bashing on the ceiling with something, weren't you? Well, you can lay off that for a start. Otherwise, I'm telling you, I'll come down here, I'll bash your door in, and once I'm in, I'm just as likely to bash you in too. So keep your bleeding nose out of it, else you're the one that'll need protecting. Who are you talking to down there? Nothing to do with you! So you get the message, do you? And don't you start giving me that police stuff either. Otherwise, I'll be the one. I'll be the one who'll go to the police and they'll cart you off to the bleeding nut house. him out of sight. I'll get him sorted out. He won't look in cupboard.
Dear Mr. Conrad, I am glad to tell you that my, my money has arrived at last and I will no longer have to accept charity or insults. Not meaning you, of course. You have always been a gentleman, but another so-called civil servant who was far from civil although paid out of taxes that are ruining the few people of good birth and breeding that are left. I will not now have to get rid of, to use his own coarse expression, of the papers and books I have collected for many years. Uh, being a reader, which is rare these days, when very few are educated, and although so much is spent on schools and teachers, etc., and there is so much ignorance even amongst so-called civil servants, not referring to you. Mr. Conrad, as I said already, I have no complaint about you, but only gratitude and kind thoughts. I may go abroad for the winter to the unique charms of the unspoilt Bahamas, and so I will not need my national assistance book anymore, and I will return it later today with thanks for past favors. P.S. I enclose a pound for you to buy a present for yourself. Woman took an epileptic fit just before you come in. They took her in another room. Miss Turpin, please. She's not long for this world. Tell that. You can tell just by looking at them. Mr. Grogan, please. Well, they're better off out of it, really, aren't they? Right, when are you starting work? Tomorrow, sir. First thing. Starting work first thing tomorrow. She's getting working boots and over. I've seen you here before, haven't I? Possibly. I doubt if you'll see me here again. Mm -hmm. Lardy bloody da. She jumped the queue. Did you see that? Who wrote this? Uh, who wrote that? Uh, Mr. Hewitt, sir. Uh, the foreman. His handwriting bears a strong resemblance to your own. Does he, sir? Yes, that's fine. We can't give you a grant. Are you calling me a liar? Won the pools, have you? Are you trying to say I wrote this to no. you? No. No. What then? Your husband come out of jail? Certainly not. Who do you think you are, then? Lady Mock? Not that I'm bothered about your bloody affairs, because I'm not. There's such a thing as good manners, you know. My money has arrived. 
That's why I shan't be here again. What money? The money from my late father's estate. You kidding? I beg your pardon? I'm not like some, you know. They can't bear anybody to have a better look. Jealousy, isn't it? I expect so. Oh, that's what it is, shines in the faces. Still, if you've never had it, you never miss it, do you? I'm just telling you we can't be more I had a cousin, you know, on the premium bonds. Well, a bit, only 25 pounds. I never asked for a penny. I didn't begrudge it her. Of course, it didn't do her any good. It changed her, did it? No, she had it stolen. She put it in her handbag. Can you credit it? She drew it out of the post office and put it straight in her bag. Well, no, that's a lie. She spent a bit. I'll remember you, you bastard. You'll get the end of a bottle in your face one of these nights. Jolly good. Now get away before I call the police. But she had ten pounds. Ten pounds, nicked. I've got more than that in my purse at this moment. Bloody assistant. You haven't. Next, please. Look. Mrs. Ross. Mrs. Ross, please. Oh, that's me. I must go. Well, uh, I'll wait for you, Mrs. You won't be long, will you? No, I shan't be long. Why should you wait for me? We're not friends. I'll be frank with you, Mrs. It's not often I get the chance to meet a real lady. This is a real treat for me. I see. I see. Uh, Mrs. Ross, over here, please. Oh, God, it's going on cold. You feel it, don't you, when you haven't got wool next to your skin? Yes, there is a chill in the air. Still, they'll be open soon. I don't suppose you'd do me the honour of joining me in a refreshment. Oh, I never drink. Oh, I don't mean drink. I mean, not drink. I wouldn't suggest that to a lady like yourself. No, I mean a, a port, perhaps, a glass of port. We can sit at a table near the fire and have a warm and a chat. You couldn't take arm at that, could you? You can eat sausages and mustard and sip your port friendly-like and get in out of the cold. For the occasion, I mean. But it is something of an occasion. Of course it is, ladylike. Here, let's get on this book. I know just the place. Don't usually travel by bus. No, well, it's all the right, isn't it? Where does this bus go to? I have to be back, you see. Oh, just the other side. Just the other side. First, please. Two fives, please. I have to be back to see my lawyers. Well, they'll wait. After all, you're paying them. No, next stop. You'll thank me when you get there. Where are we? Oh, it's on the estate, dear. On the new estate. I don't know this part of town. No, well, you wouldn't, would you? I expect you went everywhere with a chauffeur. It's just up here, love. I... I think I ought to go home. Oh, it would be a pity now, wouldn't it, dear? We're right on top of it. We'll sit in that corner by the fire. Go on, love. You make yourself comfortable. A large port and a small gin, please. Oh, I'm out of 
calling you love, do you? I mean, I'm not being familiar. It's just false of habit. Not at all. You said I'd have a sausage. Of course I did. What a memory. Can you bring the sausages, love? I mean, I'll forget my own name next. Like I said, this is one of the better class places. Here we are. It'll have to be fingers, I'm afraid. But I always think it adds to it, don't you? Well, of course, you wouldn't know. Your father, God rest him. What took him? Took him? Cheers. Yes, I mean, uh, how did he pass over? He died in the service of others. Oh, well, it's better if they go quick, isn't it? Five months, every night I went to the hospital for my mother. Five months. Well, of course, we're only keeping on that with tubes, you know. You like that, do you? It's not unpleasant. We always have a bit of port at Christmas, you know, for after the Queen's speech. It's very warming. Watch me. Bit of sausage. Plenty of mustard. And um, wash it down. Perhaps I shall be able to offer you a place in my household. Ah, God bless you, love. We lived when I was a child in the palace. What palace was that, love? Crystal? It was a bishop. Palace. My father was a bishop. Oh, was he? Yes. Tell us about it. We danced. We danced. For hours till the morning. All of the young men wore white clothes. Yes, I think they're outside now. Up you get. Just like a Christmas card. Of course, yes. You tell me about it. Are you there? Yes, in there, dear. Mm -hmm. 
do these people? Was they invited? Hey, get up. Get out of that chair. We're playing cards. Did you hear me? Get up. There you are, look. You sit down there and make yourself comfortable. Hey, shut that thing off. Come out here a minute, you two. I want a word with you. We're playing cards. Oh, yeah, come on. Come on, maybe it's you as well. Listen, you. I don't want any bloody lip out here. When I tell you to do something, do it. All oh, right, I did it, didn't I? Who is then? Never you, bloody mind. And take that fag out of your mouth. You can both get off and get your father. Well, I'm not going out again. I'll just come in. Oh, did you? Now you start and I'll just go and get him. Don't know where he is. Where do you think he is? You don't need two bloody guesses for that, do you? Just go and get him and tell him to get back here. What for? Just tell him I want him. Tell him there's some money in it. Money? Yes, I thought you'd prick your ears up at that. Now you do as you're told and he might get yours. Well, go on. Go on, maybe go with him. Sorry I left you, dear. Just getting the kids up to bed. They're a great comfort, children. Oh, yes. Wouldn't be without them. Let me have you back, dear. Now, you have a nice sip of that. It's all right. It's what you've been drinking. After dinner. Yes, we'll have something in a minute. After dinner, the ladies who sleep in the dining room, and the gentlemen would sit with their brandy and smoked cigar. They used to sit with their glasses and their cigars, talking and laughing, talking and laughing. Who is she, then? She's drunk. She's just a drunk old biddy. Yeah, I can see that. I said, who is she? I met her at the assistant. She's a Mrs. Ross. Ten quid. That's right, yes. Oh, 
Well, what do you bring her up here for? She'll have the police on us if we touch this. No, credit me with something, will you? I gave her a few drinks and brought her here when it was dark. She couldn't find me nor this street again. All right, all right. Where did an old scarecrow like that get ten quid from, anyway? What do you care? Oh, that's right. Take the lion's bloody share. I deserve half, don't I? After all, I paid for the drinks. Hey, what about us, Mum? Yeah, we was to get our share for fetching you. You know what you'll get, don't you? Did you take all she got in the bag? No, I left her a silver. After all, I didn't want to leave her with nothing, did I? Big-hearted fella. Here, see what's left. Split it between you. Has she got an address in there? What do you want her address for? Is this it, Dad? What do you want her address for? We've got to get her home, haven't we? Away from here. She's out for the night. What are you talking about? We can't walk her home through the streets, can we? Oh, shut up, will you? Here, get out, borrow your Uncle Billy's handcart, bring it round the back. Ooh, you want your bloody head examined, you do. And bring some sacks. You've just talked yourself out of any more, you did. Anybody can take it. Keeping it, that's what counts. Go on, make some tea. About all you're good for. We've done right there. She can walk the rest of the way. Is she dead? I don't know. What do you think we ought to do? Don't touch her. Don't touch her, that's for sure. Did he find you? No. It'll be some time yet. Excuse me, sir. Won't you sign yourself, Dame of the Order of the Garter? Yes. Oh, well, that's nothing. You see, she, uh... No, well, that's nothing. It changes every time. I suppose... I suppose the money must have come from her son. Hmm? Oh, yes. Have you found him yet? Yes, he's inside. You still need to talk to her, do you? Well, not really, but he ties up the loose ends. I mean, there's no doubt who did it. He's already confessed. An old friend is. Thinks the world of his mum. 
Any changes, Doctor? Well, responding, but no use to you, I'm afraid. Right. Uh, well, you better give us a call then, sister. Uh, you know, when she's ready, no panic. Thanks for your help, sir. I don't suppose there's anything I can do either. No, not at the moment, sir. Are you a relation? No. No, I'm not anything, really. I just know her from work. Is she going to live? Oh, yes. Well, recover, shall we say? What's your name? Ross. Ross, that's right. Margaret Ross. Margaret, yes. Margaret. So your whole name is? Margaret Ross. Margaret Ross. That's excellent. Excellent. Shall we try it just once more? Now, try and give them a whole name, will you? What, what's your name? That's very good. Very good indeed. She is responding, is she? Responding isn't quite the term I'd use. Do you smoke? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I can't offer you one. Responding, no, it's, um, it's more of a, a stripping down process, actually. It's a question of, uh, where shall I put it? Well, it's a question of taking off layer after layer of old wallpapers until you get down to the bare plaster. There's a saying, you know, strip off the phony tinsel and you get down to the real tinsel underneath, something like that. No, but she's, uh, she's much smarter than the average. It's a very interesting case, actually. Oh, 
what have you stripped off her so far? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, as you know, she has quite a lot of titles and possessions. One has to approach it very gently. But gradually, one by one, she's yielding up the herds of prize cattle and the fleets of merchant ships. Tankers, wasn't it? Hmm? Tankers. I must say, I half believed in that. Mm, today, you know, did we get today? Oh, yes. Yes, today we got the Bishop's Palace. Oh, she'd been there, of course. It's always a, a germ of reality. As a domestic. And so it goes on. Until she finds out who she truly is. And what she really owns. Yes, that must be a very rewarding moment. When you tell the Mrs. Rosses that they're nobody, nothing. But we've also made some progress. We've traced the husband. A gentleman from the assistant board wants to see you, Archie. Why up here? Why not down in the hall? Oh, well, it's, uh, it's a private matter, Mr. Ross. I'd like to see you alone. Oh, well, <coughs> good morning, sir. I'm usually out looking for work this time of the day, but <coughs> it's got to the, the old chest, you know. The boots are letting the rain. Well, excuse me, I'll oh. take my old rags off this chair. Oh, thank you. Well, cigarette. You're a married man, aren't you, Mr. Ross? Uh, in a manner speaking. Put it this way, I could well be. I haven't seen the lady wife for many years. She might be dead, for all I know. She's not dead, Mr. Ross. Isn't she? No, she's been very ill, but she's getting better. You sure it's my wife you've got? Oh, yes, we're sure. Margaret Ross, Nay Seaton, one son named Charles. Charlie? Yeah, that's right, isn't it? What's happened to him? Oh, well, I'm sorry to say my information is he's in prison. Is he now? Mm. What for? Robbery with violence. She became ill about the time he was arrested. Hmm. Not surprised. But she had very good attention. She'd made an excellent recovery. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Wasn't a bad soul when I knew her. A bit older than me, of course. Mm. You, uh, ever thought of going back to her? No, there's no sense in that. Think about it. A lot of people have become very interested in your wife, Mr. Ross. What sort of people? Oh, doctors, social workers, public health visitors, me. She's still your legal responsibility, you know. If you ever do get a job, you'll be responsible for her maintenance. And we'll be after you for it. Now we've found you, we can always find you again. Why is everyone so being interested all of a sudden? Bring me back to her. Did she ask you to come here? No. no. But look at it. She must ask you. Got me pride, you know. Uh, look, look, you're in this dump. She's in hospital. But she's got a flat to go to when she comes out. She's on her own. But you're not getting any younger, are there, of you? You were only suggesting this for the benefit of both of you. Well, I don't know. I don't know. What happened to her? Pneumonia. I suppose I did go back to her. Things were worked out, you know. Such as? Well, like, uh, how do I get there? Well, we'll give you a travel warrant. Well, it isn't that I mind going back. It's uh, just the appearance of it. How do you mean? Well, my appearance. Not exactly a wee bit of where I am. I couldn't go back like this. I mean, I had to put her right back in the hospital. <laughs> we'll fix you up with a suit and a pair of boots. That'll set you up a bit, won't it, in pounds? Let me put you straight, Mr. Ross. You won't be given any money. I'll see the WVS and the Salvation Army. They'll fix you up between them. You mean charity, sir? Somebody's cast-offs? Listen, Ross. I've seen you cadging coppers in the street. You're a bum, a drunk. The last time you took a job was five years ago, and you left that off to your first wage. So don't give me any guff about being too proud to take clothes from the WVS. I see you get kitted out, but you get no money, you understand? How about some money for a razor blade and a haircut? And I need a meal on the train. Give me a quid for the lot. Five bob. 
That's for the shave and the haircut. And you get another five bob when you get on the train, and that's your lot. Okay. I'll manage somehow. Right. Bit of a change, anyway. What's she look like nowadays? I don't know. They didn't send me a photograph. You're never going to judge a beauty contest, you know. You just go in hand. I believe you haven't seen your wife for a number of years. That's right, ma'am. She's been very ill, you know. So they told me. Pneumonia, wasn't it, ma'am? Yes, she was in a very poor way. A serious thing, I believe, when they catch it in the head. Well, she's responded well to treatment, but um, a great deal is going to depend on you. Now, can you be relied on? Well, ma'am, I know my record's a bit spotty. There's no sense in not being open about it, but uh, I do what I can to make up. Well, I do my best. I can't say more than that. How are you off for funds? Ma'am? Did you get any national assistance on arrival? Oh, yes, they treated me very well. Gave me ten bar had a shave and a spruce and got myself a new hat. After all those years, I wanted to see me at my best. You understand that, of course. Mm, well, I'm afraid we um, don't have much in the way of funds for this sort of disbursement, but um, I'll give you a pound. This should uh, tide you both over until you get your wife home and then you can see them again. Well, thank you, ma'am. Very good evening. Oh, Any more fast, please? Fast? Fast, please? What do we want? Well, I don't know. You're the one that's going somewhere, not me. Cable Street. Athens, get off a green man. How many? Two? Ah, two. Come to change. Thank you. Any more fares, please? Fares, please? Thank you. 
coat off. Sit down. Sit down. Well, now, what have you got to eat? How much here is there? I saw a fish and chip shop down the street. I'll go and get some, shall I? And you'll make some tea. You can manage that, can you? You can do that, can't you? All right, get on with it. Shan't be long. Very fair. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Rock salmon. Well, here we are again after all these years. Didn't think I've changed much. No change, I can tell you that. Didn't recognize you in the hospital, didn't recognize you. It's only natural, I suppose. I was ill. What do you do all the time? I was ill. Yes, I know that. I collected you for that place, didn't I? Well, what did you do? Did you think about me? Never mind, don't upset yourself. You're all right now. Well, I think I'll take a turn out. Have a look round. Find me bearings. They'll be all right, won't you? They'll be all right. I don't belong. I'll take the key. Don't make too much noise while I'm out. Charlie. Hello, dear. Thought you could be done in for this. 
course now it is. So I could, so keep it quiet. Attend your Sean Connery. Are you coming? How much? Special tonight, love. Thirty bob. Thirty bob, you'll have to pay me more than that. You can afford that, can't you? Out of your old age pension. What well, then? Seven and a tanner. Where? Up the lane. You must be joking. Seven and a tanner up a lane for a knee trip. What then? Hard bob. Give it us then. Spread over 18 months. Come on, love. I'm celebrating. I got remarried today. You still awake? Don't worry, old lass. You've got nothing I want. Finished, have you? That's right, I didn't know you were out there, otherwise I'd have given you a hand. Well, I think I'll go out and get the paper and see what jobs are going. Want anything bringing in? Shopping and that? Yes. What do you fancy? I get some kidneys or something, shall I? They're nice, aren't they? I like a few kidneys fried up. Some money, ain't you? Yes. What's up? Nothing. Have you lost something? I think so. Money? Yes. How much? A pound. I don't fear it could happen to anybody. So what we'll do, we'll go down to the National Assistance and see what they can do about it. I don't want to. So why not? Nothing wrong in losing something. Hey, where do you think you dropped it? I don't know. Well, think, what shops did you go to yesterday? Cochrane's. I'll tell you what we'll do. You write a little note saying you've lost it, and I'll take it down to the National Assistance, eh? You got some paper? I just, uh, Cigarette packet will do. There you are. Here's a bit of pencil. Yes, where did she lose the money? Well, like she says, either in Cochrane's or between there and the house. Yes, you've been back to the shop, I take it? Oh, yes. And you reported the loss to the police, of course. Oh, yes. Well, if you'll just sit down over there for a few moments, I'll go and telephone the police station. Just to make certain the money hasn't turned up since you were there. You do that. You'll have to get up a lot earlier for our change. Next, please. Nurse Edith Cavell was the biggest spy this country's ever had. Oh, yes? Who did she play for then, Chelsea? Well, it 
hasn't turned up. Oh, dear. And frankly, I doubt if it will. Now, because your wife's been ill, and because I know her very well, I'm going to pay you the pound. But I shall send someone to see her tomorrow. And I don't like people losing money. It's a careless thing to do. And I want to impress on Mrs. Ross that she mustn't do it again. Very hey, good of you, sir. I'll tell her, too. Of course, it'll make it much easier if I'm lucky enough to get a job. Well, I think I can help there, too. You've got something that should be right up your street. Now, when you leave here, go and see the vacancies clerk. He'll give you a card, and you'll be interviewed tomorrow morning. Wonderful news. What kind of job might it be, sir? Dorman at a cinema. Oh, wonderful. Nice and healthy in the open. The healthiest jobs, Mr. Ross, are the ones you keep. I'll just get your money. Can any of you drive a car? Yes, I can. Can you spare a couple of hours? Yeah. Come on, then. This chap can drive, he says. Are you a good driver? I used to be a chauffeur. If you're so good, why aren't you working? No license. No license, Mr. Fish. No license, Mr. Fish. No license, don't bother me, but uh, why not? Well, uh, I borrowed a car once. Can you handle a Buick? I can handle anything that goes on wheels. Just a Buick's good enough for now. For this afternoon, I need you, that's all. You'll get a quid. I don't know about no license. Thank you, Mr. Fish. And he'll pay and tell you where to take the car. Thank you, Mr. Fish. I'll be glad to drive for you again. Look, I've got all the drivers I need. You needed one today. It just happened. Come on, Dad. Put in a word for me, will you? I could do with a quid on the side now and again. Forget it, Dad. You was just lucky today. Conversation now and then. Nothing to talk about, haven't you? Bloody ridiculous carrying on the way you do. I mean, I don't want for people to talk to me, you know. I know people are glad to discuss things with me, politics and things. You left me. What? What'd you say? You left me. What's that got to do with it? We're not talking about that, are we? I'm back here now. I'm here to stay. Damn ridiculous carrying on the way you do. People have got to talk, you know!
money, Andy. Who are you talking to? When? Oh, just now. Nobody. You have the wireless on? No. Well, that's funny. Thought I heard someone. <sighs> oh, don't stand there with your mouth hanging open. Make a drop of tea. Where's the paper? Paper? Well, this morning's mirror, I left it here. It's gone. I can see that. Where? I used it in the dustbin. This morning's paper? I haven't read it yet. I've got to study it. Listen, I don't know what you've been used to, but now I'm here, I want all those bloody paper saving. You understand? I want them all saved. I'll tell you when to throw them out. Dad, I want you. Yes, Andy. Driving me today. Is the boss sick? No, your trouble, Dad. You're nosy. Is that Jack's car? Yeah, Mr. Fisher's car. Where is he? I don't know. Who are you waiting for, then? Andy. I'm driving Andy today. Trouble? Trouble from that lot. Slags. Thank <laughs> you. 
poor old bitch. You're on your own again. So he's not here. Where is he, missus? Would have felt across the jaw, help you remember? He hasn't come home. She don't know. Missus. Missus, you tell him. When he comes in, you tell him. Mr. Fish wants to see him in a hurry. You got that? Tell him we're looking for him. And we'll keep on looking till we find him. Understand? All right. We'll be back. Stuck. Yeah, just a bit. It's this one. Hello, Mrs. Ross. What are you doing here? Oh, where's your husband? I don't know. We don't know where he is. He hasn't come home. Since when? A long time. He went out and didn't come back. I haven't any money. Oh, why did he go away? Have you any idea? Perhaps it was those men. What men? Two men came to the house looking for him. I wouldn't describe them as gentlemen. 
Did they say why they wanted to see him? No. Shall I report it to the police, Mr. Conrad? No. No, I'll, um, I'll find out about it. I'll see to it. You liked having him back with you, didn't you? I mean, are you sorry he's gone? Not him. Are you? Yes. Got her back, have we? Yes. Are you there? 